Hello again, welcome back to Illegally Sighted. This is BGFH, and this time I'm back for another kind of a bit of a hardware review and AT demo video, kind of rolled up into one here. Uh, yeah, so what we're looking at here is uh, just happened to pick up a new toy a few days ago. Um, been looking into something like this for a while now, especially for part of what I'm doing on my job and just out of sheer personal curiosity as well. So <clears throat> what we're looking at here today is an actual, yes, Windows 8.1 tablet. Um, this is the Acer Iconia W4 Windows 8.1 tablet. So I'll just probably call it the W4 or the Acer tablet from here on in but it's the Iconia W4 uh, tablet. So here we got the box that it came in, nice little, you know, tiny box. Nothing too uh, interesting or special about it, but um, there you go. So we got the box there, but we don't care about that. Uh, we care about this guy. Here we go. So yeah, this is the tablet. It is an eight inch tablet and uh, 8 point something I forget exactly what the dimensions are but uh, yeah it's um, kind of in between I would say like the Nexus 7 and the iPad Air both of which I have uh, well I've shown you the iPad and the iPhone on the channel I haven't shown you the Nexus as of yet because um, I haven't figured out a clear way to record it and before I go any further I'm actually hoping that this video turns out well and you can actually at least somewhat read or see what's going on so yeah this is the Acer tablet here um, it's you know it's there's not too much to say about the hardware it is uh, let me turn it, the screen off for a minute so I can easily show you stuff here so on the top you've got a little power button and that's pretty much how you get on the top side there on the right hand side you have your volume up and down button you've got a mini or a micro USB um, or mi micro SD card slot I'm sorry for a micro SD card which definitely comes in handy I'll talk a little bit about that in a second you do have a mini HDMI port out so if I want to, I can connect this to my HDTV, which is really nice. And you have, on the bottom, you've got your micro USB for charging and plugging in other peripherals. So I'm going to turn this back on. Now, on the front... Items. Windows lock screen. Okay, good. Yeah, I was hoping that I wouldn't have to enter my password. Um, on the back, there is a 5 megapixel camera. I have tried it a little bit. It's not, It's really nothing to write home about. It's about what you would get on the iPad Air, maybe a little bit less. Um, of course, there's no flash. So, you know, it's like, I don't understand why these tablets, they put cameras in them, but they don't bother to put flashes in them. So it's like, kind of, why, why have the camera? It's got a front webcam also at the top side over here, so you can use it for like Skype or something like that. Um, and that's really the hardware. Um, we've got a quad core Atom processor or uh, Atom processor in here, and it's way faster it seems than the Atom processors you would typically think of back in the netbook days of oh I don't know 2008 2009. Um, part of that is the processor itself, part of that is actually, you know, solid state storage, part of that is also, uh, they've kind of improved Windows 8 a little bit as far as being a resource hog. Uh, let's get something more interesting to look Start at menu. here. Bam. There you go. Mail. And I'm just going to touch Internet Explorer, double tap to activate, triple tap something to there. So, yeah, this is a full... Windows 8.1 tablet. It's none of this Windows RT nonsense. I think that's thankfully dying. 
uh, because it's like, well, the Windows App Store is kind of limited when you look at Android and especially iOS, the a variety of apps that you can get. So if you're not able to run traditional Windows applications, it's to me, it's really not that appealing of a prospect, especially as far as accessibility goes, because you can't then run any type of other assistive technology. You can run Narrator. You can use what kind of janky magnification you have on the tablet, and that's really about it. Um, right now, I'm just going to be showing you a little bit of the tablet's features through Narrator. And uh, this isn't really a tour of Windows 8 or really Narrator for that matter. I just kind of wanted to do like a first impressions uh, of a Windows 8 tablet. Um, because I've been curious about how Windows handles the whole touchscreen idea for good or bad for good or bad and uh, I gotta say my first impressions are generally pretty positive um, you can tell I've got my little jam box speaker up here so you should be able to hear narrator quite well you've already heard it speak a couple of times as I've jumped to my start screen here so for those unfamiliar with Windows 8 in general, the main difference about Windows 8 is that the start menu is gone. You instead have this full screen start screen as they call it. And it used they used to call it the Metro tile interface or Metro interface and then they quit calling it that. And now I think they just call it like live tiles or something, but basically this is the tablet friendly section of the device. So you have an app store just like you would on Google Play or the iOS app store. You can download your kind of tablet-esque apps. Your device comes with a variety of them built in, some of them from Microsoft, some of them through the manufacturer that you get. Like this is, a, there's a few Acer apps on here um, and Acer's also preloaded a few things like uh, Netflix and Hulu and Amazon, Kindle, a few things like that, and a couple things that I actually deleted as well. Um, really, uh, Narrator does surprisingly well for initial setup and generally getting around Windows 8 on the tablet. Just like iOS or Android, I can touch desktop double tap to activate triple tap to select I'll turn it up one more here just to make sure NVDA double tap to activate triple tap to select and glass double tap to activate triple tap to select so all of these things whatever I touch it's going to speak uh, whatever is there and um, these NVDA and this magnifier those are a couple things I installed NVDA but really haven't gotten a chance to play with it all that much because uh, it does support touch gestures too and that's something I'm going to be working on here in the near future. But uh, I did grab a free magnifier app that, you know, for what it does, and given the camera that it has to work with, uh, it does a decent job. So it's just one of those tools that it's nice to have on there as well. You have your app version of Internet Explorer, your store, you got your calendar up there, people, that's where it kind of crams all of your contacts and it merges in like your Facebook and Twitter and I really haven't wrapped my head around the whole people concept yet because it's just I have Twitter and Facebook and all that nonsense uh, integrated because I was playing with that on my work Windows 8 machine and like I said it's all linked you know those both of these machines my work machine and this tablet are linked to my Microsoft Live ID so the cool thing that was you know with that it was uh, when I set this up I entered in my username and password and it just created uh, it just set everything up for me that I had on from that I had from my other PC all my hotmail was set up my people were in there um, I think all my contacts from like Facebook and Twitter are there I think if I uh, when I looked at that it seemed like they were in there uh, then you've got like, you know, your news and your sports and all kinds of stuff like that. I can take two fingers. Scroll to 
and then I can basically move these tiles over. You get some stuff for like the Xbox games, you got your camera, music, movies. Again, if I touch any of these. Video double tap to activate, triple tap to select. Music double tap to activate, triple tap to. Games double tap to activate, triple tap to select. Health and fitness, extra. Extra. Grab a healthy meal at these former newsstands. A5 QOCL1 image double tap to activate, triple tap to select. Now the voice you're hearing is one of the Windows 8 voices. I must say that uh, Microsoft has vastly improved their speech since Windows XP. The Microsoft Anna voice in Windows 7 was okay, but I still had some issues, especially like when it said certain things. It was kind of hard to understand and... I would miss certain syllables, but the Windows 8 voice is actually pretty pleasant. Um, there's a male and a female voice, and the nice thing is, is that if you use a program like NVDA, or any screen reader for that matter, but especially the free ones like NVDA where you get this really tinny eSpeak voice, uh, you got a Windows 8 machine, you can use that Microsoft voice and make it a lot more of a pleasurable listening experience for no extra cost. So there is that. Now uh, let's uh, zip over here a little bit. So we've got a little few more apps there. Here are the apps that uh, Acer has put on. Like I said, I removed several several of them that I hadn't even heard of or didn't care about. But like I said, we've got the Kindle, the uh, Netflix, uh, Evernote is there. I haven't tried that yet. Unfortunately, from what I can tell, Kindle does not read. I haven't tried it fully with NVDA yet, so I don't know how that's going to go just yet. But like I said, this is more of a first impressions video. Uh, and then over on the right here, I've installed a couple of apps so far. Uh, I still have to set up. I do get a code. Speaketh. Microsoft Office double tap to activate. I do get a, a copy of Microsoft Office Home and Student 2013 for the tablet so unfortunately no Outlook but eh, you know hey at least you get Microsoft Word and Excel um, which is what I mainly use anyway so hey you know what I can live with that another basic copy of Office and then I got a couple games I got a Jetpack Joyride Live Deletion uh -huh. 2 image double tap to activate triple Jetpack tap to select Joyride. Live Deletion 3 image what? come on talk Vikings updates. Oh, Vikings, Vikings updates. Vikings trade Harbin to Seahawks. Double tap to activate. Triple tap to select. Okay, so I grabbed a little Vikings app that I saw in the store. Um, I think we're getting a little bit more lag. Um, this is the first time I've really used a Bluetooth speaker with Windows. Um, and overall, it seems to be fine. Uh, but normally, I don't encounter quite so much lag with... Uh, narrator it actually performs pretty well um, I can also use it you know so narrator works generally pretty well in this Windows 8 interface I'm gonna go back actually to the scroll left to, scroll to zero percent and let's say if I open Internet Explorer Internet now Explorer, this is the app to version to remember to I'm gonna double tap this giant bomb giant bomb video game reviews videos now I can use my two finger tap just like in iOS to shut it up and I get the full, like I said, the nice thing about this tablet is I get the full desktop experience. So this is the Internet Explorer app, so it looks a little bit different than the desktop version, but it's a lot more touch-friendly, and that's definitely a good thing. But what I like about Narrator, surprisingly, is one of the recent updates that they did, if I touch, let's say, here. Video. Quick look. The last tinker. City of Colors, link double tap to activate. Value HTTP colon slash slash. Now what I can do is I can swipe headings. up and down. Links. Tables. Characters. Words. Lines. Paragraphs. Lines. Words. Characters. Tables. Links. Headings. Items. Paragraphs. Items. Let's do items. Then we'll take a one finger and we'll flick to the right. Video. How to build a beast. Episode 02. Link double tap to app podcast. All plus F1. August 20th. Tooth video. How to build a beast. Episode 02. Podcast. All plus F. 
Latest stories, one of three. Grid, link double tap, list, link double tap Let's, to uh... HTTP colon slash slash WW23. The Witcher, Battle Arena is another Witcher spin-off. By Patrick Kulpeck, August 21st, 9.03 a.m. This time around, CD Pro So, using Windows Explorer, or using Internet Explorer is actually very usable. Uh, I was really surprised at how well Narrator performed. I'm able to do the read the website. I can jump around by headings and links, and they have a nice, if you can look in here, they've got a nice little outline for the cursor to show what you have in focus. Um, <clears throat> that works generally very well. I've navigated a few websites uh, of varying quality. I like demoing this giant bomb website just because, I mean, let me back up here a little bit. It's so cluttered. You've got like the stuff across the top and then you've got your main column over here. You got some right stuff there. Um, but with the app version of Internet Explorer, it works generally very well. So I'm quite pleased at how that turns out. And so if I don't have Start a keyboard menu. with me, Mail. Mail. Launch mail. I can select. definitely Dragable. use Column one, row one. hush. I can definitely use the tablets, uh, tablet to explore the internet. Um, email is a little bit sketchy. Um, it works, but it doesn't seem as responsive as I would like. And maybe I just need to play with it a little bit more. Um, but it's something definitely to look at a little bit further. But um, to read, I think it can be done. So if you're navigating around the tile interface here, your touch screen is not too bad. However, where I really find the problem as a tablet to come into play is if I go to the desktop. Desktop double tap to activate, triple tap to select. Now here is my standard Windows desktop that everybody is by now Program familiar manager, with. Name, Acer Portal, five of nine. So I've got my icons down the left side, my wallpaper, my uh, taskbar with my running app or my pinned applications, and way down here, my system tray. Now I'm holding the I'm holding my phone right up to my tablet. And look at how small that still is. I mean, compared to my big finger here, my, my uh, index finger. What I find is that it is really hard to use desktop, traditional Windows desktop applications as just a tablet. You can kind of finagle your way through it but you really have to definitely make sure, especially if you're a low vision user, um, you really want to make sure to use some sort of a speech uh, screen reader to be able to navigate because A, like I said, your buttons and your icons are all very small. So just getting your finger to accurately touch the right one that you want is a chore in itself, but combine that with being low vision and actually trying to see those tiny icons, let alone click the dang thing, um, it's a chore to say the least. For instance, um, let me just open up. Internet Explorer button double tap. Let me open up the regular version of Internet Explorer. So now I've got the regular. It's not even maximized. We got a. Regular Alert classic security report. Good for you. We've got a classic win, uh, Internet Explorer window here. I'm going to put my phone right down on it. And hopefully this isn't too blurry. But look at how small those are. Um, you got the little X in the corner. You've got your little buttons over there. But if I put my finger there, oops, sorry, the clarity my finger pretty much covers all of them. So if I back out to like a, you know, put my camera way up here where I'm looking at the full screen, hopefully that focuses halfway decently. Look at how small that is. So what I found as a screen reader user, 
The only way that I've really been able, because I can't use Alt F4 because I don't have a hardware keyboard yet. I'm actually waiting for that still to come in the mail. Uh, but in order to even close a window, what I find the easiest thing to do... Selected. Google tab item double tap to select. Let's see, are you cut off? Let's see, this is a challenge. Refresh. F5. Button double. Security report button double. Show address bar autocom. Search. Control. Pl menu item. Dis drag to task bar to pins. Address and search using Bing. Address. Editable tab. Recent pages button. Forward button. Back button. No previous item. Oh, you're really, you're not going to read into the dang title bar? I'm trying to get up to the title bar here. Oh, crap, no. Item is disabled. Favorites button double tap to activate. Come on. Home button double tap to activate. And this, see, this is so far up toward the top of the screen that I can't even get my finger. Come on. And I was hoping that if I swipe left enough, it would actually go... See, I was going originally to, like, the back and the forward buttons right over here, and I was hoping if I kept flicking left that it would jump all the way back up here to the close, minimize, and maximize buttons. Um, but it's not, and like I said, I think part of the reason in this case... I'm having trouble, is that the um, the title bar is so far up to the top that I can't... Nope, I'm not... Favorites button, double tap to activate. I can't get it, so I'll have to come back to that later. I apologize. But that just gives you an idea at at least at what right right now, when you're dealing with a Windows app. Um, but what I would j typically do, and I've done this a few times, is if I have a window in the middle of the screen, I've had a couple of settings windows, I've had a Windows Explorer, I've had an Internet Explorer. Um, I'll tap on the title bar; it'll actually tell me the title bar, and then I'm able to swipe to the right a couple of times. To jump to the next item and it'll get me to the close button and I can double tap it that way so because these items are so bloody small um, if you're gonna use if you plan on using your tablet uh, to do any sort of mainstream like regular traditional Windows desktop application you really 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 want to have some kind of a keyboard be it a Bluetooth keyboard or using like uh, the micro USB port, you can get a little USB host adapter where you can plug peripherals into, like a Bluetooth, or not a Bluetooth, but like a standard keyboard or mouse or flash drive or external hard drive, that kind of thing. Um, which I did get. Uh, and at work, I have used a regular keyboard until my Bluetooth model has come in because, yeah, I mean, like I said, to use a tr traditional Windows program, it's really tough. They have not unified. Like, I was hoping that if you had a tablet, you know, there would be some setting to be like, make Windows inter, you know, make standard Windows elements larger so that you could actually touch the close button or the back button or whatever interface button you want to with your keyboard or with your finger. If you have Start enough menu. vision to do it, yeah. if you have enough vision to do it, you can probably, you know, a stylus would be a recommendation that I would have, but combine that, like I said, with your low vision, being able to see where you're accurately pointing, um, it's kind of a nightmare. So, yeah, having that extra little keyboard is going to be very helpful. Now, um, as far as magnification goes, I really haven't done much with magnification. I've tried it, and unfortunately, here's what I found. So, like Internet Explorer, you have the app version, and you have this regular desktop version. And the problem is, is that they're two separate things, just like the you know Internet Explorer, the magnifiers, there's two separate ones one for the Metro or one for the tile interface which we're looking at here and then the standard Windows magnifier like I showed you in one of the other AT demos it's the, it operates the same way as it would in Windows 7 however 
what's really jarring is I, I don't really use either one right now and I pretty much just use my speech like I do on an iPad or an iOS or Android device because if I'm in this interface and I use magnification well then that generally kind of works um, but the gestures are eh, just I haven't really become that accustomed to using it but then if I switch out to let's say a regular desktop application then this magnifier stops working and I have to have the other one the old school Windows magnifier that has to run so one of the things I haven't tried yet is you know you can actually have now with eight, uh, Windows 8.1 you can have a tile app let's say on the left and then on the right hand side you can split the screen down the middle and have two tile apps side by side or you can have a regular Windows so I could have you know a full version of Microsoft Word on the right and then some uh, the app version of Internet Explorer or my mail so how would it handle that then would it be able to put both magnifiers on the screen at once um, I doubt it uh, so really with Windows 9 or whatever they're gonna call it they have to they really gotta merge there should really only be one magnifier just like there's one narrator if I'm using narrator right now I can touch something on this touch screen uh, in my tiles I can also touch something on my desktop or on a desktop application granted narrator doesn't read very well in most uh, traditional desktop applications but they never said it did uh, they haven't added a lot of that functionality just yet so that's why I have NVDA for when I use a lot more traditional Windows software uh, but you know really they, they really need to have a unified magnification solution because Android does it iOS does it I mean granted they're not using you know if I'm using an iPad it iOS is iOS you know we don't have half of like a Mac looking thing and then half of a phone looking thing it's all consistent but the point is is that I can use magnification and speech together now um, gestures don't conflict and I can move around anywhere on the device and still be okay so if you're a low vision user wanting to use magnification on a tablet I would maybe be a little hesitant to recommend that unless you planned on let's say using a keyboard uh, a case with a keyboard where you had it in like a laptop mode and then you had either like a wireless mouse or uh, you like I said use the cord and actually had a mouse because the other problem that happens and this really surprised me desktop double tap let me go to my desktop again Google, internet explorer window search so if I were to turn magnifier on the old school magnifier um, by the way either version of magnifier be it the tile version or the old version <laughs> unlike narrator uh, narrator you can do just you hold down the windows key and the uh, volume up key and it turns narrator on or off well magnif magnification there's no quick way to do it using just tablet gestures or buttons if you have a keyboard hooked up yeah I can use the Windows Plus Windows minus and Windows escape all that kind of stuff I can do that but if all I have right in front of me is my tablet with a touch keyboard um, you can't quickly do it the only thing you can really the best you could do is maybe pin the old school magnifier down to your taskbar and then you could tap that icon launch it that way um, but even the tile version you have to go into your if I swipe in from the right here charms window I can bring up my charms I can go to my search and then I could just do a search for um, and the thing is I think I have to I can't just search for magnifier because that brings up the original version of magnifier it's a confusing mess um, you have to search for I forget what it even is it's under ease of access but 
yeah, like I said, it, the point I'm trying to make is that it's really cumbersome. Oh, and what I was going to show you, what I originally went to the desktop for, what I originally went to the desktop for is, <laughs> I found out the hard way. So I had my keyboard connected at work, my wired keyboard with my little USB cord. And I thought, okay, well, this is cool. Let me just uh, hit my Windows <clears throat> plus key to turn on the magnifier. And then I can uh, at least look around the screen and look at this tiny, tiny interface uh, because of the high screen resolution we're looking at here. Yeah, well, the problem that I have, and unless I've overlooked something, when I turn the magnif when I turn the original, like you know, the desktop version of Windows Magnifier on, I can't just use my finger, two fingers, or three fingers. I've tried all three. Hell, I've tried all four fingers. Um, to try to pan around the screen because if I zoom in a lot, I'm only going to see, you know, a portion of the screen, just like you saw in all my other magnification videos. Well, you know, unlike the iPad where I take three fingers and I just move them around to pan, uh, the that that does not work with the classic Windows magnifier. So you pretty much, as far as I know, unless there's some really weird, I know when you use the tile interface you can kind of touch the the sides of the device and it kind of does this weird pan and then in the upper corners you can do like a plus or minus but when you're on this desktop version I don't think you can use it without using a mouse so again if you're using regular old-school desktop applications and you want magnification, you probably best have a mouse handy because it does not seem to work all that well. Um, I mean, the old school magnifier is kind of useless on the tablet without a keyboard and mouse uh, to make it easier and quicker to use. So, magnification is, I think, definitely where they have to figure out, especially, you know, have a more unified version so there's not Start menu. a magnifier yeah. for this, a magnifier Launch for the mail. desktop, different Follow sets of gestures, one. and just not even gestures for the one. It's just, it's a kind of a mess. So if you're a magnification user, you're probably better off with a touchscreen laptop or just a laptop in general because it's just going to be a lot easier for you to work with. Um, if you're using speech primarily, uh, a Windows tablet, I think, could be pretty nice. You're still going to want a keyboard because Windows, you can get around the tiles here pretty well. But if you're going to be switching between and opening programs and using a mixture of these tiles and then a mixture of regular, you know, old Windows programs, you're going to want a keyboard to make life easier. But with speech, it's actually not bad. A narrator does let you navigate Windows 8 pretty well. I've used NVDA very, very briefly, but I can't really speak to how well it performs just yet, so I don't want to get into that too much right now. I know we're running a pretty long video as it is, but uh, I just really wanted to give you kind of an overview of a Windows tablet now that I've actually had a chance to play with one. So, um, like I said, the one I have is the Acer Iconia W4. For me, it was between that and the Dell Venue 8 Pro. And the reason, couple reasons that the um, that the Acer won out is because A, the HDMI port, so if I really want to connect it to a monitor, I have an easier way to do that. I don't have to use, um, I don't even remember what they call this new wireless technology for connecting to monitors. Um, it's kind of like the AirPlay that Apple uses, but there's another term for it, and I can't remember what the general term is, and not a lot of devices support it just yet. So I wanted to have that option, and the other option is, or the other reason was that I bought this on Amazon, surprise, surprise, and uh, I could get the 64 gigabyte version for under $250, which is actually pretty darn good. 
the Dell, the 64 version was 300. Now both, if you want the 32 gigabyte version of either the Dell or the Acer, you can get that. Those, both of those are like 200 bucks right now on Amazon. But before I go, you know, I do want to mention the storage because these tablets, you know, they're not a right, you know, I mean, it's a full Windows computer and you can potentially do a lot with it, but, you know, you're really going to be limited to storage. So, um, thankfully, unlike iOS devices, they have removable storage options. I can hook a thumb drive. I can hook up a USB hard drive. I can hook those things up with my little cable. But it also has a micro... SD card slot, which I have a 64 gigabyte micro SD card as well. So I have 120 gigabytes of total storage, but not quite 128 because, like I said, the win it's hard to almost re it's almost hard to recommend the 32 gigabyte version of a Windows tablet because the s Windows notoriously just takes up a lot of storage. You add, you know, some pre-built or pre-made apps on there. I haven't installed Office yet, but I imagine, I don't remember how much that's going to take up, but that's going to eat another chunk of hard drive space. So you do that. You put a couple pieces of assistive technology on there. Maybe you download a couple apps. You put a couple games on there. Your hard drive is toast. Uh, your, your, your internal storage is toast. So, you know, you're going to need that micro SD card, um, but you want to give yourself enough wiggle room just on the device itself because I don't know I haven't used the device enough to know you know if ha if apps and programs can be installed directly to the removable SD card and if it if it can does the performance suffer even more than it would if I install it directly to the device's memory um, those types of things so you know, it's, it's, uh, it can be a little bit more complicated than you would get with something like iOS or even Android. But, you know, you're basically cramming a full Windows operating system onto a little slab. So, that is something that you want to kind of consider as well. And if you can get one, uh, you know, I said look at the prices. Um, so far, I mean, the build quality and just the form factor and performance, I'm pretty happy with uh, what the Acer has offered so far. So the Dell, um, funny enough, at the, pretty much exactly the same time I got mine, my tablet, a co-worker, he actually bought the Dell Venue 8 Pro, and I didn't know about it. So I did get to see that yesterday as well as I'm recording this and <clears throat> you know hardware wise they're pretty much identical specs wise the Dell just doesn't have the HDMI cord or port on it and it was more expensive so like I said I went with the Acer model and uh, it was cheaper so um, I you know I'm happy with it uh, the Dell I think is a little bit more aesthetically pleasing it's a little bit more you know modern and like tablet looking this one you know it's a little chunkier but it's still it's still it's comfortable to hold buttons are you know easy to use um, no real complaints there so that will wrap up a kind of first look at Windows 8.1 for touchscreen device and a little kind of introduction to the Acer Iconia W4 Windows 8.1 tablet. So there's a lot more that I don't know, so I'm just kind of telling you what I've experienced so far, and maybe we'll uh, explore something more in the future. But uh, yeah, it's been an interesting experience so far, and I'm kind of looking forward to playing with it even more to see what I can what I can and can't do and what how things work but uh, yeah overall first impressions are pretty decent um, hope you guys found this uh, helpful or interesting and I hope the video quality isn't too horrific 
So until next time, uh, like I said, follow me on Twitter, subscribe to the channel, uh, that kind of stuff. And until next time, I will talk to you guys again later.